Hello, my friends. D.L. Anderson here. Welcome back to Transformation by Truth podcast as we share the truth concerning these last days and what you must do to save yourself from the violent times that are just ahead. Today's podcast is a word of truth accounting of the end times. The end is coming. The end is near. Today's podcast is entitled End Times 261, The Law We Are to Keep, Part 1. The podcast objectives are analyze the fate of those who are not taken, analyze where our focus should be in this season, analyze what it means to eat the whole roll, analyze how Yahushua Messiah fulfilled the law of Moses, and analyze the advantage we have over those who are under the law. This lesson contains timelines and other visuals. Therefore, if you are listening to the podcast, I advise you to watch the video version on our website or YouTube or request a PDF of the lesson so you can add the visual effect. No bridge to cross. Now, we covered a great deal in the most recent podcast. Most importantly, we hardened the importance of ensuring that we are adhering to the full breadth of the restoration message as we labor to obtain the seal of Elohim in the current season. Lo, this is such a critical factor as it pertains to our salvation in these last days that I made multiple warning calls as I emphasized the prerequisites on the seal of Elohim. Not only this, I also made it clear that there is a window of opportunity within this current season for us to verify our preparedness to obtain the seal. Nevertheless, you must appreciate how this window is closing faster every day, and the opportunity to enter in is quickly fading away. Now, here is the question. What happens to those who do not fulfill the intent of the restoration message? The answer, these will not be taken. Rather, they are the ones who are left behind. Now, we addressed the model of those taken versus those who are left behind early on in this end time series in a four-part series entitled, One Taken, One Left. In that series, we came to see how those who are taken are received by the Father and they are carried by him through each season in these last days. On the other hand, those who are left are not carried by the Father. Alas, these men, women, and children are all abandoned by him. They are all left behind. The graphic below, which I introduced a few weeks ago, is a powerful illustration of this concept of one being taken and one being left. As it pertains to those who are taken with regards to the restoration, these are those who have crossed the bridge of confirmation. Now, if you recall, the bridge of confirmation is the final exam upon each season in these last days. You can see this in the graphic below. This exam is designed to ensure you have fulfilled all the requirements associated with the current season. 
for these requirements represent the intent of the truth revealed in that season. In effect, those who have crossed the bridge of confirmation have received all the content and fulfilled the intent of the restoration message. Lo, this is the straight gate and the narrow way. And even though it is hard pressed, the cost you pay is more than worth it. For this is the only path that leads to life. This brings us back to the question, what happens to those who do not fulfill the intent of the restoration message? The answer, they have no bridge to cross. For the Father is the only one who can carry us from one season in these last days to the next. Now, as you can see by the graphic below, these individuals have no path to obtain the seal of Elohim. And this is where many within the extended nation are today. While the Father carried his chosen elect into the season of sealing, many members of the extended nation of Israel were left behind. When I say extended nation, I am referring to all who claim to be in the nation of Israel. And in making this claim, they are also suggesting that they are under the restoration. Similar to the visible church, and the parable of the dragnet, the extended nation is a mixed bag of believers, some good and some bad. And alas, for various reasons, many within the extended nation were not taken. They are not being sealed in this current season. On the contrary, they never passed the first season. And if they don't repent and fast, the door of salvation will be shut. The window of opportunity will be closed. The bridge of confirmation will have disappeared as depicted by the graphic below. Lo, this is a depressing reality and a most significant loss, for these will all be left behind with no bridge to cross. It was his plan to destroy them. Now, I really want you to think about this for a moment, and I would ask you to visualize it if you will. While the Father is sealing his chosen elect in the current season, many who claim to be under the resurrection were never taken. Rather, they were left behind. Not only this, but these same members of the extended nation who are not being sealed are still preaching and teaching the restoration message. My dear friends, I ask you to listen to me carefully and hear me as I say, the restoration of the nation of Israel has ended. It is over. It was the first season in these last days. Now, true, that doesn't suggest that we should no longer talk about restoration. I'm talking about it even now. However, I am doing so within the vein of the sealing of these set-apart ones, because that's the season we're currently in. Lo, here lies the difference between me and these. And I advise you to consider this difference faithfully and carefully as I offer it to you with the following interest point. 
Many are still preaching and teaching the restoration message because it's the only message they know. For the Father has not carried them into the next season because he has no intention of providing them with his seal. Therefore, they neither cannot teach nor preach on the sealing of the set of part ones because it is a super feature of the Holy Spirit they do not have and will never obtain. Thus, they are limited to the fragments of the restoration message they are aware of. For if they had received the full message of restoration and followed it, the Father would not have left them behind. And that, my friends, is the difference between me and these. I'm not teaching bits and pieces of the restoration message because it's all I have. Quite the contrary, my focus is on the ceiling of these set-apart ones because this is the season we are currently in. This is the season we must master to remain in the Father's will, such that we are guarded during the hour of temptation that has come upon all the earth. As for the restoration, of the nation of Israel. I have made it abundantly clear that I am referencing this season as a matter of scriptural and historical fact. Now, as you can see by the timeline below, the restoration of the nation is the only season that has already passed. And we are not going backwards in time. My dear friends, we are going forward. Let's talk about that for a while. Explicitly, what that will look like in the upcoming years. Per the timeline below, we are living in the second season in these last days. As such, our focus should be on the season that is right in front of us. That is the sifting of the nations. You must believe me, the true prophets of Elohim are focused on the sifting of the nations because we know what is coming. And because we know what is coming, the Spirit has led us to place no shortage of emphasis on the seal of Elohim. Here again, our references to the restoration message are simply matters of validation as it pertains to the seal of Elohim. As for the rest, these are still focused on their limited interpretations of the restoration message because the Father did not take them. Now look, they have no bridge to cross, for the time is past, and thus, they are trapped in the former season. They are stuck and getting nowhere fast. Alas, these individuals are still living in the restoration of the nation. They are living in a season that has already passed. You'll know them because very soon the Father will carry us into season three the same way he carried us into season two. And while we will have exited Mystery Babel and we are preparing ourselves for its destruction, these same individuals will still be talking about the restoration. Not only this, but many of them will still be in Mystery Babel. Here lies the inflection and a matter I caution you to consider carefully. Those who the Father did not carry will remain in Mystery Babel, teaching and preaching the restoration while Elohim is preparing to destroy it. Now look, 
that's when the father will carry us from season three into season four. And the destruction of Mystery Babel will soon be at the doors. Then the time will come and he will destroy Mystery Babel and all who are in it. He will destroy all whom he left behind. And that, my friends, is the moment these false prophets and false believers will finally stop talking about the restoration. It is because Yahuwah will have destroyed them, for they were all wrong. For as they refused to walk in all truth, it was his plan to destroy them all along. Eat the whole roll. Now, this is no doubt a very powerful illustration that I trust you will all consider carefully and faithfully, for it is likely that many of you have not made it across the bridge. Many of you are not prepared to obtain the seal of Elohim. My advice to you is as simple as it is sure. Don't stop. Keep going. For the bridge of confirmation you see in the graphic below will soon disappear. And always remember the transitory nature of these last days, which we addressed in the first podcast in this phase, i.e. end times 250 an intro to the sealing of these set apart ones. Remember the parable of the 10 virgins. Remember the real reason why they were not prepared when the bridegroom came. For it is the same reason why many who have heard the restoration message will not obtain the seal of Elohim. My dear friends, it is quite simply because they did not fulfill all the requirements. And I cannot stress this enough. Trust me, this is not a new thing. The same way the former nation failed Yahuwah in times past, the extended nation is failing him today. Lo, he has given us his word and not in part. As in the days of Ezekiel, he has provided us with the whole roll. And while he is commanding us to eat the whole roll, many are refusing for a myriad of reasons. Ezekiel 3, 1 through 3 reads, And he said to me, Son of man, eat what you find. Eat this scroll. And go, speak to the house of Israel. And I opened my mouth, and he fed me the scroll. And he said to me, Son of man, feed your stomach, and fill your stomach with this scroll that I am giving you. And I ate it, and it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. Listen to me. This is the same word Elohim is speaking to the renewed nation of Israel in these last days. He is commanding us to fill ourselves with every word of truth he is revealing to us. And we are not to add to it nor subtract from it. Now, besides the obvious fact, that we should obey Yahuwah in every situation, there is another prominent reason why obedience in this scenario is beyond valuable. I've said it before, but the Spirit is leading me to say it again. You will not have success in the current season if you did not fulfill all the requirements on the most recent season. Listen to me. 
We serve an Elohim of purpose. He does not put commands in place for arbitrary reasons. He does it for our good. He is trying to ensure that your life story has a happy ending in an evil day in which the vast majority of mankind will inherit a most torturous fate. Regrettably, many within the extended nation are too blind to see this, and thus their lives are not going to end well because they could not see the value in eating the whole roll. They forfeited the keys to their victory and they will regret it for all eternity. I did not come to destroy. Now, these things being what they are, we must continue in our analyses of the content and the intent of the restoration message. This, my friends, is you and me eating the whole roll. Let's begin by turning our attention back to how the law of Moses evolved into the Torah of perfection. Explicitly, we must consider how there are several commands within the law of Moses that we are to guard even in this day. Although the validation of some of these commands is more complicated than others, there are many which are very clear vis-a-vis -vis the Ten Commandments. Without going too deep into this matter at this time, I would simply state that we are to guard the Ten Commandments in these last days. This is part of the restoration message. It is required for us to obtain the seal of Elohim. Now, the question some might ask is, how is guarding the Ten Commandments not equated to going back under the law? The answer, to be under the law, requires a full regression to its adoption with the intent of finding some path of salvation within this outdated belief system. My dear friends, allow me to be very clear. That is not what we are discussing here. Guarding the Ten Commandments does not mean you are going back under the law of Moses. We know this because the Ten Commandments transcend the law, for they were instituted before the law was given to the former nation. Likewise, we are not promoting a full adoption of the law of Moses. Neither are we suggesting there is a path to salvation within guarding the full breadth of the law or even a subset of the law. Hear me carefully. Nothing we are stating is equated to placing oneself under the law. For as we have stated, the law as it was formally instituted does not exist. And thus, how can one be under the law if there is no law to be under? Now we're getting to the heart of the matter. As I said before, the law of Moses evolved into the Torah of perfection. It was upgraded. It was made better. For the latter, unlike the former, offers us a path into everlasting life. Notwithstanding, you must appreciate how the law of Moses is the foundation of the Torah of perfection. And thus, it would be impossible for the Torah of perfection to be an evolution of the law and fail to retain any of its principles. As a matter of fact, all the principles of the law are found within the Torah of perfection. The primary variation is the application 
of these principles contingent to the spiritual upgrade achieved during the evolutionary process. We see this process clearly through the life and the teaching of Yahushua Messiah, who testified that he did not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. And he achieved this fulfillment by A, teaching the Torah of perfection, and B, demonstrating perfection in his life. Matthew 5, 17 through 30 reads, Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For truly, I say to you, till the heaven and the earth pass away, one yod or one tittle shall by no means pass from the law till all be done. You heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that whoever is wroth with his brother without a cause shall be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be liable to the Sanhedrin. But whoever says you fool, shall be liable to fire of Gehenna. You heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone looking at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. The advantage we have. Now, there are two primary takeaways I want to address from this pivotal passage of Scripture. One, the evolution of the law, and two, the persistence of the law. Now, as it pertains to the evolution of the law, we hear Yahushua Messiah addressing certain precepts of the law and then taking them further. In effect, he was saying, the law of Moses will take you this far, but my Torah of perfection will take you all the way. Case in point, the law of Moses says, thou shalt not commit adultery, but the Torah of perfection takes it further saying, don't even look at a woman to lust after her. Can you see the spiritual upgrade in the Torah of perfection? Quite clearly, for if we close the door on lust by following the Torah of perfection, then there can be no opportunity to commit adultery. This, my friends, speaks to how Yahushua Messiah fulfilled, i.e., completed the law. See, the law focuses on the first half of the equation as it pertains to sin. Vis-a-vis, -vis, it exposes sin by specific commands, often preceded by thou shalt not, or more perfectly, you do not. Notwithstanding, the law does not address the spiritual process or power that positions you to do not. This is where the Torah of perfection comes in, for it addresses the second half of the equation by providing us with the potential and the power to defeat sin, such that we fulfill every command preceded by you do not. Now, here again, Case in point, to avoid adultery, overcome lust. To avoid murder, overcome anger. To avoid swearing falsely, don't swear at all. To avoid the suffering that comes with hate, love your enemies, and so on and so forth. 
it really is that simple. Now, the factor of simplicity speaks to the matter of understanding. Implementing the Torah of perfection is not simple because the hearts of men are evil. And thus, we were given the set-apart spirit to provide us with the power to overcome the sin within our hearts such that we can walk the path. This speaks to the advantage we have over those who were under the law. Explicitly, without the spirit of Elohim, they lacked the power to overcome sin. This is true even though some men who were under the law are accurately described as perfect. And yet, you must remember, there was no salvation in the law because the law was not able to make anyone perfect outside of the institution. For although the scriptures testify to the perfection of a few men who were under the law, their perfection was within the institution. That is to say, they were blameless as touching the law. Nevertheless, and this is a matter you must receive, there was yet no path to salvation within the law. And thus, their perfection on this wise was of no value as it pertains to everlasting life, but the hope of the promise which they saw. And Elohim, being witness to their faith in the promise and not in the works of the law, guarded them under the law until the time of refreshing had come. That is the Torah of promise. For in it, he hath given us his Holy Spirit that we, like Yahushua Messiah, might attain unto the resurrection from the dead. Now, Philippians 3, 3 through 11 is revealing. For we are the circumcision who are serving Elohim in the spirit and boasting in Messiah Yahushua and do not trust in the flesh. Though I too might have trust in the flesh, if anyone else thinks to trust in the flesh, I more circumcise the eighth day of the race of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, according to the law of Pharisee, according to ardor, persecuting the assembly, touching the righteousness that is in the law, having become blameless. But what might have been a gain to me, I have counted as loss because of Messiah. What is more, I even count all to be loss because of the excellence of the knowledge of Messiah Yahushua, my master, for whom I have suffered the loss of all and count them as refuse in order to gain Messiah and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through belief in Messiah, the righteousness which is from Elohim by faith, to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if somehow I might attain to the resurrection from the dead. Lo, these words spoken by Shaul confirm every matter I have addressed in this lesson. And what makes them all so critical is the fact that they are the precepts of the restoration message. This is the word the true messengers of the restoration were preaching during the first season in these last days. And yet, on this matter, 
we have only addressed the first takeaway from Matthew 5, 17 through 30, i.e. the evolution of the law. We must also address the second takeaway, that is the persistence of the law. And that is where we will begin our next podcast as we continue in our detailed analyses of the people and the places of the ceiling. For you will come to see that the most important factor concerning the people in every season is their beliefs. Now, here is the final word. The prevailing question of faith has always been, what do you believe? At the same time, this question is fundamental. It represents our foundation. It is rightfully the beginning. But look, my dear friends, at some point in the progression of our faith, our beliefs must be converted into knowledge. And thus, it is no longer a matter of what you believe. It is now become a matter of what you know. From there, Knowledge is converted into wisdom, for we do not stop with what we know. We must take the next step and act. For salvation is not limited to what we know. It extends to include that which we do. And thus I caution you to measure your activities and ensure they are a reflection of the Yahushua Messiah within you. Now, here is what's next. We completed today's podcast, in Times 261, The Law We Are to Keep, Part 1. And the next podcast is entitled, in Times 262, the Law We Are to Keep, Part 2. I will post this podcast on Monday, February 26, 2024. Until then, my friends, continue to be led by the Spirit of Elohim. Continue to watch. Continue to pray. Continue in fasting. And most of all, continue to be focused. For the end is coming. The end is near.